Welcome to episode two of the Disneyville podcast. We are very excited. Listen, you should have seen us both sitting tush to tush, <laughs> creating our lists for like this 12 episode. 12 feet apart. What are you talking about? Well, but it felt like we were literally like back to back in our own chairs at our own computers, not looking yeah. at each other's lists. I like, can't stop let you looking. Look. And I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Are you kidding? I don't even have my glasses on. I can't see. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was so much fun planning for this one. So today's episode is going to be all about our top 10 favorite things to do at the beloved Epcot. And it's fun because what we decided is that the first four episodes are going to be each park because it kind of is a good overview mm-hmm. of all four parks. To be able well, and, and like also who just, we are and yeah. all that kind of stuff. To, so I think it's a good a good way to do a little series here, one for each park. Yeah, it's a it's a solid way to just dip our toesies in the Disney water with the Disney ducks. Anyway, <laughs> I feel weird in my own skin right now. Do you? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> What's fun? I was so excited to start this one, and now that we're actually doing it, I'm like, okay, how do I talk again? Okay. I know we, we yeah, it's just different than what we're used to doing. So one thing we did want to mention early on is, of course, if you're not following us on social media. Uh, We are at Disneyville Podcast everywhere. I think on Twitter it might be at Disneyville Pod. Yes, I think you're Who has Disneyville Podcast on there? (laughs) Right? Like, what? what? Yeah, I don't know. That's funny. Wait, have we had this conversation? I'm having deja vu. No, I don't think think we've (laughs) had it yet. Oh, boy. Anyway. yeah, Disneyville Podcast. You'll find us everywhere. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, if you'd rather watch the video feed of this, uh, search us on YouTube. (laughs) Came out weird. (laughs) Uh, Obviously, Disneyville. Are you okay? I let me take a sip of my coffee. Hold on. <laughs> um, okay, so this was kind of a fun one to actually like you were talking about sitting down to to write out these because it was really hard and then it was really easy. Like at first I was like, oh well, when we go to Epcot, all I want to do is eat. So like there's like a few things I want to do, but then when I actually started writing stuff down and going through, I'm like, oh I love doing that. Oh I love doing that. Oh I how, how uh, there's so much to do in Epcot even with the giant Epcot dirt pit. Now here's another question. <laughs> TM. <laughs> Did you talk about anything that's passed or is it like this is Epcot as it is right now because there's so much in flux right now? Oh, wow. No, I did all Epcot now. Okay, I did too. As in like you could go tomorrow in theory and do any of the Okay, I did too. I just want to make sure because there's so much that's changing right now. So, Well, this is true. But you couldn't do future. No. Did you include Tron on your list? No. Oh wait, that's not <laughs> yes. just kidding. Educate. But I mean, I did, I did it really a, yeah. should be in Epcot, right? Like vibes. True. Okay, anyway. so what are the rules of our top 10 Epcot? Okay, so if you're playing at home and you wanted to make your own top 10 Get list. Get your bingo cards ready. Yeah, I, I'd be curious to hear your top 10. Um, the rules were no, like, restaurants, because that is a whole different beast we'll talk about in future episodes, undoubtedly, because we have a lot of thoughts on favorite foods and drinks Oof, in all of the parks, especially Epcot. Yes, definitely. And Epcot. that was one of the hardest parts of creating this list. So no, like, specific restaurants. I'm kind of weaving in a few things, but it's not, How like, dare you? I know. I'm just... How dare you break the rules <laughs> on episode two? <laughs> Where sure are we, we going to be in episode two? broke up in episode one. <laughs> anyway, um... And so then it was just open. You could do attractions, rides. You could do shows. Um, some of mine are, are, are a stretch, and I wonder if some of yours are too. I, They're very specific. Maybe that's what I should see, say. See, I kind of went the other direction. I went very broad because I'm like, it's too hard to pick specifics. Yeah. All right. I'm so <laughs> curious to hear yours. I know. What are our guesses on how many we have in common? Last time our guesses were, I think, four, and we had, I think, more than that in common. Yeah, I don't remember how much we actually ended up. Yeah, we should count doing yeah oh we should also mention that um at the end of our list we're going to share some that you guys sent in we asked a question on instagram stories for uh disneyville podcast and a lot of you guys came through with some really ones i didn't think about that i'm like oh man i should have put that on my list or ones that i was like oh yeah like yeah this is what i think i'm most excited about with this podcast is that we're doing the audience interaction we're doing the listener interaction so i'm like excited to learn about like what other people like it's yeah. fun to talk about. What you jonesing for at Epcot, you know? <laughs> I think if I were to pick one park to go to, if I had one day in Disney and I could only do one park, it would be Epcot. No kids? Yeah. Kids, I'd be like, Magic Kingdom, there's more to do. But I already have plans for another show for like Epcot with kids because there's so much new that they've added that is so much fun with like our four-year-old. You know what's funny is a lot of people think Epcot's like for adults, but actually I was talking to one of the agents and she has a young son and he loved epcot like they went into epcot with the mindset like oh we'll do some stuff and then we'll mm-hmm. leave and that ended up being his favorite park go figure and like it, a young kid right yeah yeah i think he's f- three four 
I should probably know that. But yeah, he's he's a he's a young yeah. kid. And he loves it. It's like his favorite part. I'm like, that's so funny. Like he loved wandering around World Showcase and all that kind of stuff. So Well, there's some fun things to do there, like exactly. the TikTok and anyway, I could go on and on, obviously. Well, we're I could going go to on and on. <laughs> for approximately the next hour. <laughs> You think it'll be an hour? I guess we'll see. All right. Let's have you start with your number 10. Okay, but I have one more question before we start. Okay. When you spell Epcot, do you use all caps or do you capitalize the E? I think... I wonder. I just looked at my list. I was like, oh, I capitalized it all. No, I just capitalized the E. But I feel like a lot of times when I'm writing it, I do capitalize it. Yeah. Because experimental prototype community tomorrow. Okay. Right. But we also all say Epcot Center, which, well, I don't say Epcot prototype. Center. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I think I think it. Epcot <laughs> prototype. No, <laughs> experimental prototype community of tomorrow center. <laughs> if you think about it. So okay, so it's funny because they obviously it was it was supposed to be an acronym to begin with, but then Disney themselves changed it to just a capital E Epcot, and it sort of became its own thing. It wasn't the the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. But now a lot of the merchandise, because they're already at the point where they're kind of going back mm -hmm. and looking at nostalgia, they've like recapitalized everything. So like there was a time when it was just a capital E Epcot and now it's back to being all caps. So I'm like, it's all, everything is correct. Nostalgia is strong, people. The, everything's made up and the points don't matter. <laughs> That's right. All right. You're number 10. All right. Wait. Okay. <laughs> Guys, we're never. <laughs> so gonna, much anticipation. Did you really want to hear the list? Because we're never going to get to it. Um, it's like when you're waiting for a beat to drop. <laughs> <laughs> in a song and it just never dropped um one thing we grappled with was with these lists and it was the same Stop for looking at my list I, I'm, I, I'm telling you i can't read it um is do we focus it on like okay if someone asked me what to do in in epcot these would be like oh these are the things you must do or was it really my top 10 personal favorites as someone that's gone a million times. And so I think we both kind of towed that line and it's, it's a, a little mishmash of both. Yeah, because I couldn't, that was, it was kind of hard. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I think so, I would adjust a little bit. I guess that's what I'm saying. Some of these would be removed from the list if it were like someone that doesn't go often and was asking. I would remove some of my personal things. Yeah. And anyway, that's yeah, all. Yeah, I could see Felt that. like that was important to say. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, if you're watching, you see, you saw that we just moved our microphones. We're trying a lot of things. We're trying because we keep, we keep looking at each other when we're. Yours talking, seems so. far from your mouth. Though. Yeah, because I'm loud. Okay. <laughs> it's funny, I am too. But I guess we'll see. Okay, so are we ready? Yes. Okay, so my number ten, Spaceship Earth slash, the Hepcot Ball. <laughs> that is that low on your list. It is shame because I had it higher, but I kept moving it down when I thought about other things. Mm -hmm. And again, I sort of think about it like if I could go into Epcot and do one thing, this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. So that would be number ten on, and you'll see why That's fair. as That's we fair. go through. It's it's hard. It's hard to rank them. It wasn't hard to come up with the list. It was hard to rank them. Yeah, it really was. And also, I have like five honorable mentions that I'm throwing in, and I don't care at the end. <laughs> it's our podcast, and we can do what we want. That's right. But the uh, I called it the Hepcot Ball, by the way, because our daughter called it the Hepcot Ball for years <laughs> with an H at the beginning of it. She's so cute. I think she might still. I wonder. No, I think she knows. I think finally she's changed Hepcot. it. Yeah. Hepcot. But so I, cute. I, people will comment and say like, I always call it the Hepcot Ball now. I'm like, I love that. <laughs> Hepcot. Uh, yeah, it's just so nostalgic. I'll talk more about it because obviously this one's on my list too. Obviously. What do you love about it? So it's one of those things that when we would go, when we were younger, I remember for whatever reason, we always did Epcot on the first day. Like we would get up at five o'clock in the morning or fly there like super early back before we had kids. Now we fly in at like 3 p.m. <laughs> but we and would it's great. fly in first thing because I remember like the night before being like, oh my gosh, by like in 12 hours from now, we're going to be in Disney. So I feel like mm -hmm. we always went to Epcot our first day and I don't know why, but we would fly in super early. We'd go to Epcot. And then I feel like that was the first thing we always did. And just that smell. And I remember several times being like, oh, I'm away from work. Like I'm here. I can smell it. Like it was just so exciting to mm -hmm. be there. And it was like the first thing we would do when we got there. We need to get some Disney candles burning in here. You know <laughs> what I mean? I know they have like whatever company has a Rome burning. Yeah. Scent. Oh, so good. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, mm. all the feels that you just gave me the goosebumps because that's just all sweet times. <laughs> also, if you notice me messing with my shirt, if you're watching the video, I... <laughs> I have a rip and I just filmed another video for my channel and I'm realizing you might have been able to see it. Don't stop looking at it. I'm not going to stop looking at it. Okay, <laughs> your number 10. My number 10 is Harmonious, the nighttime spectacular, their fireworks show, if you will. 
Um, one thing about this is Tyler they don't and I know what they want. <laughs> Epcot has got to make up their mind. <laughs> I just feel like it, it's a good, I genuinely do like the show. And I feel like it's been a while since we've like really just watched it. We'll usually catch I the agree. first two thirds of it and then book it on the Skyliner before the throngs get on there. Um, but I do like it. I mean, it's, it's Disney doing fireworks. It's always spectacular. I think it's easy for people that are Disney nerds like us and probably a lot of you guys listening or watching that to look at something new that Disney does like a fireworks show and be like, Oh, it's okay, but it's not as good as like we were literally yeah. talking about last time. But I mean, to an outsider looking in, going to Disney and seeing this for the first time, they're like, Oh my gosh, the fireworks at Epcot. Like it is spectacular, yeah. but it's just, it doesn't quite hit all the notes I want. But again, it's on my top 10 list. I think it is. That's what I'm saying. It's so it's good. Really it's good. worth seeing. Um, and seeing more than once, but it's just not been that like top tier type show that. Well, what's me. interesting to me is that they have these huge things in the middle of World Showcase Lagoon, mm -hmm. which wouldn't bother me if they had become a fountain because I have some footage somewhere where I show like it was supposed to be a fountain during the day. And mm -hmm. I think we even saw them testing it. Like we saw the thing on the side and then we saw them testing it as a fountain during the day. And then it would be really pretty. You have the water, you have all that kind of stuff. But for the last year that we've gone, it's just been these gigantic things which i feel like is very universal and i don't know how else to say that <laughs> and we love universal i want to yeah, make yeah, we that love clear. universal but it yeah it doesn't seem like i feel like they would like, make it so the whole thing would sink down or something during the day like i don't know that like, would be, be disney that yeah. would be cool but they i don't know why they they just kind of sit there and they never made them into a fountain i'm sure there was reasons maybe i'm sure it was cost or whatever oh, yeah. but that's what's weird to me about harmonious and so i'll be curious to see what they do with that with the new show and then they're going back to Epcot forever and then they're doing a new show. I don't even know what they're doing. They don't, they don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't hear the word harmonious and not think of harmonicas. And I don't know how to separate that in my brain has nothing to do with anything. Just wanted to share it. Just reporting it. All right. Perfect. Good to know. <laughs> okay. My number nine is the grand fiesta tour. I know. I, you I, were I, waiting for my reaction on that. Well, I know you, you like... love it. We love it. I, I, it's so good, but it's one of my favorites because it's like, again, Gigi loves it. So it's, again, with kids, it's fun to go. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's also one of those ones that it's it's very underrated and it's either an hour and a half wait or a five minute wait. And if you catch it during the five minute wait, it's never that long. I was like, but I look, have never seen it above like a, 20. No, but there's a, a few times where it's like that. It's like a weirdly long wait. Well, and also there's no room in the line. So where are these people that are... Right. <laughs> You're like, it's a two hour wait. I'm like, but where are they? Yeah. Yeah. But I, it's, I feel like, again, it's one of those ones that I remember like being one of the first rides we rode when we got there. And I'm still so excited to be in Disney because we just flew in and all that kind of stuff. So that's the same kind of reason. I feel like you're going to say that for all for of these. all of them. Hey, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. That I could talk about ad nauseum. I love that ride so much. I used to have a shirt that said, I don't oh, remember yeah. what it said, but it was, it was the three of them and it was from that ride, but it was like a kid size. And it is way too small on me now, but it was, you know, yeah, I got I mean, it. was like red, wasn't it? Yeah. I wonder, yeah. I might have it put away. Yeah. Gigi could probably have it. <laughs> <laughs> small 20 year old me. Oh my God. All right. All right. Your number nine. My number nine is Frozen Ever After. And you know yeah. what? This is coming from someone like you that was a Maelstrom lover and was so sad when that left. So like deeply, weirdly, deeply sad. And I watch ride throughs of that and just cry. Gall darn it. If that ride frozen ever after isn't so good, yeah. I can't even be mad. I know. It's so know. good. And that's what, that's always like the example I give is when people are like, oh, they're doing this, they're doing that. And people are going to be upset about it. I'm like, look at frozen ever after. Like I was so sad when Maelstrom left, mm. but frozen ever after is so good. So I'm like, I, I, it's one of those things that I'm like, they're always moving forward. They're always trying new things. And I just, they just nailed it with that ride. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And I love, like, you can see schematic maps online mm -hmm. of seeing how they redid it, but they're using the same pathway, you know? Yeah. But then there's, like, parts that used to be where you get off that are now this part of the ride. And that. And I love looking at those kinds of things yeah. and how they did it. Yeah, recently. Gosh, if you were an engineer, wouldn't it be fun to be an Imagineer? Oh, my gosh. We should tell our engineer friends, like, what are you doing with your time? And why aren't you trying to work for Disney? Well, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> we have... All of we our friends are engineers. We have a weird amount of engineer friends. <laughs> uh, but no, what we, happened uh, with us? Right? Yeah, I don't know. We're the we're the disappointments. Um, but uh, I, one of uh, my brother Jason's, one of his friends, looked into becoming an, uh, like a roller coaster engineer, and apparently, it is so incredibly hard to get into because wow. 
most people once they get a job with a company they stick with it forever and you only design a new roller coaster every few years so like it's not something there's a lot of turnover in and all that kind of stuff so i don't know if that's well, true well if they or were not. working on tron they would have had a job for 10 years i'm pretty <laughs> sure but i don't know i don't know if that's true or not but i remember him talking about that he like he decided not to do it because it was such a uh, there was so so much competition yeah i could see that because it'd be fun it's like roller coaster tycoon but real oh remember God, that, that game a, i know that game was great oh does that still exist? Can I do that like on my iPad? I bet it does. I bet it does too. Nostalgia is strong, like I said. We're hitting that mark where we're now this. old and so everything old is new. Gosh, I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's giving me all the feels right now. All right. Your turn, number eight. Voices of Liberty. That was one that I was like, because it's so hard to narrow down specific things. But again, if I'm going in and I'm doing like one thing, I would, I love the Voices of Liberty so much. I remember when we were younger going in and sitting there and I remember like I had heard people talk about it, but I didn't really know what it was, but Mm -hmm. sitting there, there was this one guy, I wish I knew his name. I can picture him in my brain. He was real tall Mm -hmm. and he just had the most piercing voice, like beautiful. And it just like sunk down into my bones. It was so, and I'm just being like, oh, (laughs) like that, (laughs) like that Jiffy. No, I fear. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. And I remember it just like, ga- it was amazing, this guy. And then, of course, they're all so talented. But I just remember like watching that and just feeling it in my bones. It was mm-hmm. so good. Well, and of course, in that like rotunda that they typically sing in, it's yeah. perfectly acoustically. Did, it's acoustically acoustic. <laughs> perfectly acoustically. But you know what I mean? Designed. Yeah. So yeah. it just, wow. Because it was designed for that purpose. So it's just, it's. It's so good. Just a it was roller a coaster of... battle hymn of the Republic. That's what he's saying. Oh, I still we might have to look up some YouTube videos it. of them here after we're done filming and just listen. And that's such a specific talent too to be able to sing a those crazy harmonies, but to be able to blend so well and to be yeah. able to hit straight tones when you're singing with that many people so that everything blends so well. It, that's a that is a talent in and of itself. That yeah, you could be a great singer and not be able to do that. You could also be a mediocre singer, but be really good at things like Voices of Liberty because you can really, if you have like perfect yeah. pitch and you can really hit your notes and hit the blending part of that. Yeah. And like hold off your vibrato. Like it all has to match up so yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. That's always like people will insult a singer and be like, oh, they're more of a choir singer. I'm like, no, no, that, that is, is a talent. It's a, just a different talent. So um, I just like to just sing and I don't like to blend with anyone. <laughs> I just do it like an Elaine stretch. I just sing as loud what? as I can all the wrong notes, but you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Company! <laughs> if anybody <laughs> listens to the original cast recording of Company at the end, so there's a show, it's my favorite show of all time. You just hear Elaine stretch just screeching in the background on no note. I don't think she's hitting a note at all. I would love to have been a fly on the wall in the recording studio. I bet they were like, okay, now Elaine, just back away. Back there's, away from the mic. There's, a, there's a documentary of them recording that, uh, of them recording the company uh, album. I know what we're doing tonight. It's so good. It is so entertaining. All right, my number eight. You yes. ready? Strap on in. The new creation shop. Specifically, what number was this for you? Eight. Eight? Yeah. Okay, mine is my number seven, which would be next is also so the creation shop. So let's just let's collab on this Let one. us collab. <laughs> but you got to have iced coffee in your hand, of course. Of course, I. Have I would to have, have said with iced coffee for all of these. Yeah. Well, you tell t- <laughs> you tell me your so seriously. Yeah. Sorry, I was gonna start telling my reasons, but you tell me your reasons first, and then I'll tell you mine. Um, I love the way that that new shop is laid out. I loved mouse gear. I mean, I just I'm listen. I'm a sucker. Oh, I am a sucker for gear, and merch. I'm just I love it. Oh, mouse I love gear. it. I love mouse gear. Why did you say it like that? You just said I'm a sucker for gear and it was called mouse gear. I just forget. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, there you yeah. go. <laughs> anyway, but <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I think they did, again, they, I was, stop, why are you stop smiling at me like that? The Disneyville podcast. What are we doing? <laughs> I feel like they say the Disneyville podcast. What are we even doing? <laughs> that should be our tackle. Uh. This is a terrible. What are we even doing? Terrible podcast. I hope you guys know what you knew what you signed <laughs> up for when you started a listening. Um, Sorry, carry on. I love the setup. Oh no, I can't look at you because I will <laughs> not be able to control myself. It's just so um, well laid out. It's just pretty. I feel like they have some like random stuff. So I'm like, oh, I didn't see that at wherever. Um, 
I just like it. And I, yeah. I think it's cool that it's within that same like breezeway with the uh, Connections Cafe and like all that. I just think they did a really good job. I think so too. Utilizing I think... that space that was already there and really needed some rehab. Yeah, I think they did a really good job with it. Again, it's one of those things where people were upset about that kind of going, but it was ne- it needed to be updated. And a lot of people are still, like real upset about, you know, the 80s Epcot sort of going away. But I'm like, the 80s Epcot went away 15, 20 years ago. Like it's it, it's just We haven't it hasn't been it here hasn't in so been, long. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's just sort of sat there for a while and it really, really needed this refresh and everything they've done so far. Personally, I'm a huge fan of, and I think the the shop is a great way. Cause I, I, I loved mouse gear, but looking at that versus what they have now, I'm like, this is mm-hmm. it's updated. It's modern. It's what they needed to do. So I, I completely agree. I think they did such a good job with that whole section there of connections. Mm-hmm. And I'm so and curious that. to see the rest of what they're finishing up in the giant dirt pit TM, yeah. but <laughs> I, uh, GDP. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Like gross domestic product. It's I know GDP what GDP means, means, but why dirt. did you bring a oh, giant <laughs> dirt pit? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'll be here all day. Um, I'll be here for the rest of my life. <laughs> Guys, uh, it's Monday when we're filming this and the kids are not here and we're just living large and in charge. <laughs> so what were we even talking about creations? I don't know. I, oh, one thing I was thinking about was, okay. Let's all travel back in time, folks. If you, you if you had been to Epcot, um, let's say, 12 years ago, or maybe even 10 years ago, and you're walking into, what were those places even called? Um, Interventions. Interventions. And you walk through, and you're like, wow, yeah, this is like old nostalgic Epcot. You kind of love it, you know, but there's nothing to do. There's like a weirdly long line for that one robotic thing you get in and get sick in. <laughs> And there's like maybe one other thing. And then you're like, it's just a bunch of people sitting on the ground, taking a break from the air, which I totally get from the air. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just feel like you'd walk through it and you'd feel all of those nostalgic feelings, but there was nothing to do. Yeah. It was so, by, by the point, by the time they finally were like, okay, let's do it. It was so beyond. It was such a waste of space. So. And it was a huge amount of space, too. Yeah. What's, uh, what's funny, though, is I did love that House of the Future. I made you go <gasps> in there every that. time. I forgot about that. That part was cool. <laughs> but it's funny because it was just a house with a bunch of, like, iPads attached to the walls. But, man, I loved that house. It's funny because now the House of the Future is, like, real. Like, we all use echo or whatever you might use not everyone but you know what i mean it's totally like plausible now but back then it was like wow it was so cool oh, was. i love that house in the future um okay so what are we on number so you just shared your seven yes because we had the same seven so now you go to your seven okay people watching at specifically sunshine seasons oh, that was almost on the list yeah it's yeah. there's something about it and sunshine seasons is just that quick service there in the land pavilion but there's something about it that is And I think it has more to do with just memories we have. Yeah. But it just, it's a good people watching place. You're in the AC. You can, there's always tables and chairs to sit at. And we'll usually just like grab a snack or a drink and just sit there and. mm. Just look around. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, a lot of times going in and getting the, oh shoot, I just had it. The, what do they call it? The bounty platter. It was like like a breakfast. It was like the best bang for our buck. And we would go and we would feast like kings on that. Yeah. (laughs) Sitting there and. Then uh, back to our Epcot shenanigans. Yeah, there is something about that pavilion because that really sort of has that nostalgia yeah. still. Ugh. Yeah, and if you like look up, you see all the like hot air balloons mm-hmm. and we'll have to do episodes in the future of like the history of a lot of that stuff. But. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's one of the big things I'm most excited about to do in this podcast is Disney history stuff because mm-hmm. we both love researching that kind of stuff. And oh yeah. <laughs> that'll be fun. Oh, it would just be terrible to be forced to look into some Disney history. <laughs> okay, so my number six, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. The Land Pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're lining up so, really yeah, nicely. Yeah. You, said, you just like things a little bit more than I do. <laughs> you said, so, yeah, exactly. One more up. You said Sunshine Season specifically. Mine is the Land Pavilion. So, you know. Mm, so, okay. Same, same, What else? Same, what you, else do you love in there? The, see, but see, can I talk about this? Because these are like specific rides. Does this count? Yeah. It's kind of an all-in-one, all-encompassing. Yeah, I'll be cheating here in a few, so. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, obviously, the, uh. Living with the land. Come on. It's so good. That was the one, as I was looking at your guys' recommendations on Instagram, that was the one that someone said, and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about Living with the Land. So I figured it would be somewhere on your list. because yeah. this, like... this is sort of all-encompassing of that. Mm-hmm. Although I do have one breakout from here in a minute, but the I couldn't even pick because is even the- Is it a mission breakout? <laughs> no, but the, um, uh, I'm losing track of my words today, but just that whole pavilion, it just makes me so happy going in there. I know. 
Even they have to walk up the mountain to get to it. <laughs> and you can't bring your strollers, which I understand, but it still stinks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. My number six, Figment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Again, I know you guys are like, okay, we get it, nostalgia. But if you're watching this and you love Disney, you probably feel the same way. Figment is one of those peculiar things. And I'm, I'm saying things because there's the character, but then just the ride and like the whole pavilion it's so peculiar because it was a character that was created that's non a non a movie cartoon, character. Yeah. Not, yeah. And Disney Dan, who if you're not following, he has a YouTube channel. Does he have a podcast? I don't think he does. He should. Um Disney Dan, if you're watching, you should. Um <laughs> but he I love his YouTube channel and he'll do yeah. deep dives into the most ridiculous things. And in he's Disney hysterical lore, too. And he's so funny. One day we will meet him in person. I just know. Anyway. Um, but he recently, Figma is a very big part of his life and you'll, if you watch some of his videos, you'll see, but, um, he just did a deep dive. I've been meaning to show you into Figma and where it all started, like back in comics. Like it's, it is so much more, it is so much deeper than I ever really realized. But anyway, the fact that Figma nowadays, like with the popcorn buckets a few years ago and all of that, that he's so big, we used to have the fear that Figma would be like, they would just get rid of the ride because it's obviously kind of old. It's not like super anything, you know? But with that kind of enthusiasm for this character, yeah. he ain't going anywhere. It's sort of like Tinkerbell syndrome. Like they, Tinkerbell was sort of a nothing character, and then when they did the Wonderful World of Disney, she would come in and she would do the the ding and all that. But then she sort of became the uh, almost synonymous spokesperson. With yeah, exactly. But yeah, it was sort of same sort of thing. Like he's become the spokesperson of Epcot in a lot of ways, which I am very excited about. But yeah, we used to buy, we bought like stuffed animals and stuff because we we're like, you might go away. <laughs> Yeah, we had better. Uh, I remember one time you went to Disney. It was like on a travel agency yep. training thing. And I remember you brought me back a figment, Stuffy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stuffy, you can tell we have kids. And uh, Gigi has it now, but yep. I absolutely love it. And so when she's good. tired of it, he's coming back to me. That was back my, to mama. <laughs> that was one of my honorable mention ones just because just it, so it was fun. hard to put on the list, but Gigi also loves it too. And so like that's one that she, when we go into Epcot, she's like, we got to go ride figment, figment. That's why I said it there, yep. <laughs> I, it's just, it's a goodie. All right. So are we on five? five. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So my number five is Test Track, but the old one. <laughs> really? This doesn't count because we specifically said it has to be like nowadays Test Track. Now, don't get me wrong. The new Test Track is still awesome. And it's still obviously the same exact layout and all that kind of stuff. But I loved that you were like, you used to be like a crash test dun- dummy. Like that was oh, like so fun. No. Oh. <laughs> if you had any idea you know (laughs) so uh but like it made so much more sense and i remember even knowing the old story like now because you're supposed to be like in a computer simulator it doesn't really make sense like i think it makes sense but it's like more complicated if you were just walking in i think you'd be like wait so what's going on and it's like back in the day it was like oh you're sliding on ice or like oh here comes a truck like a tow truck it's gonna hit you (laughs) but like it was i don't know it just seemed like but now it's like initiating simulator and it's like you you sounded like uh what's his name you know yeah him but uh i don't know so like i feel like i still with when i write it i still think of the old version which i know is not really fair because it's still good you still go like 60 miles an hour on the bend and it's all great but if i were that part just will always feel like the original test track because it is yeah i like the new one it's been a few years since i've written it next time we go we need to like write a switch or whatever but um can Genevieve ride it? I wonder if she's tall enough. I think it'd be a little thrilling, so, yeah. that outside part. Anyway, um, yeah, I need to ride that again because I feel like I almost can't speak to it and it's not on my list because I was like, it's just been too long since I've yeah. written the new one. But I remember liking it yep. more than you did, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the new version specific. Yeah. 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 All right. Now I, my number five is Remy. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Oh my gosh. How is that not on my list? Well, oh. and I'm also grouping in... The new just France area because yeah. it is so pretty. They did such a good job of making it totally meld with what they already had done. Mm-hmm. But the ride is so fun. And I'm someone kind of prone to motion sickness, especially after having kids. And it really didn't bother me at all. And I remember we rode that ride back, humble brag, in Disneyland Paris yeah. for honeymoon. That was like years and years ago. But it was so much fun then, too. Mm-hmm. So it's so cool that like basically the exact same ride is now here. Yeah. And I cannot believe that they have not put in a Gusto's restaurant. What were they thinking? Wait, am I Why making this up? in the world? Monsieur Paul, Monsieur Paul's should be Gusto's. I think that I think they're doing that. Did I make that up? Or was it just something okay, I was talking they, about with other Disney if people they or was that something they, they were actually doing? This is I don't the most remember. obvious thing that they should do. Everyone would fight for reservations. 
They could charge a hundred million dollars yeah. a plate because you know the they people. already do. Mm-hmm. No, I be, I feel like they are doing that, but I can't remember if that's we'll just me look it up. having oh a my conversation gosh. with other people, or if that actually was Disney that said they're going <laughs> to do just it. Conversation with yourself, like that'd be a good idea. That'd be a great idea. Yeah, honestly, that whole area. You, I mean, you just can't so you can't take a bad picture in that area. It's oh just it's so beautiful. And with the skyliner above it, mm-hmm. yep. ten out of ten. Oh, so good. Yeah, I'm. I can't believe I didn't put that on my list. Mm-hmm. So what are we on? Number four. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my number four is. Frozen Ever After, which obviously we've talked about a little bit already, but it's just, uh, we're not going to go into it again. What's your favorite just, part of the ride? Ooh, I think it's still because it all syncs up, which I think is so cool with the music that when you go in and you see Elsa and you do the turn and then you start going back and it's right, you start going back right as the, the, she says, let it go. Yeah. And the, the lights are coming on the fiber optic lights or whatever they are. And like those projections and all that, like it just syncs up so well with the music mm-hmm. and oh, it just gives you, it gives you all the feels. Yep. That's my favorite part too. Yeah. All right. All I right. My number four. Four. Okay. My number four is Spaceship Earth. So we've already talked about this. Mm-hmm. Um, What's your favorite part of it? Ooh. I mean, the burning, it sounds so silly, but like the burning part where you can smell it, there's, it's like, that's so (laughs) burned into my memory. I just love it all. I really, that's one of those things I just love. Last time I wrote it, the, in our car, the computer was like off, like it had gotten messed up. So I actually couldn't hear anything. And so I wrote the entire ride. I had to tell the cast member after like, hey, you might need to pull this off, whatever, yeah. as if I know what. <laughs> but I was like, hey, the computers aren't working in here. And it yeah. restarted halfway through. It still didn't work. It was just me and Felicity. And Felicity was sleeping, so she didn't care. <laughs> um, but it was really weird to see all of this and not really be able to hear the sound, which was kind of crazy. Yeah. But just see them all like silently moving <laughs> was haunting. Uh, my... I'll never look at it all the same. Yeah, I love the... Uh, the... The just constant sort of buzzing that you hear with that ride too, like as it's going through the tracks, like there's just a little, there's like a little sound you hear. I don't know that I've ever really noticed that. I'll have to pay attention. It's- so good. <laughs> Love that one. All right, number three. Mm-hmm. Okay, this was hard. The, the top three were really hard. I knew immediately what my top three were going to be. But I didn't know how to rank them, but I think I did it right. Okay. Number three, Soren. <gasps> that high. Oh, and it's, it's so sort good. of like what I said in the last episode, because A, it's just so good. And I always liked it, but I like it so much more that it's soaring over the world. It's so good. They did mm-hmm. such an amazing job. But that's one of those rides that like when we've gone with groups of people and there's always that person or a few people who maybe are not Disney fans, Mm -hmm. that's like the one ride that I can get anyone to ride and be like, that was awesome. Like everyone loves that ride. It's so cool. Anyone can ride it too. So it's not like a, you know, a real thrill ride where you have like height restrictions or Well, there is a height restriction, but it's like Genevieve now can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, And she's four. So she loved it. um, But like everyone can ride it. Grandma can ride it. You know, kids can ride it. Like it's, it's sort of a family thing that everyone can do. Whereas, and if, even if people like don't like roller coasters and stuff like that, can still do it. So, yeah, like my mom's not big on coasters, but she really likes it. Exactly. Ride, yeah. So it's just, it's amazing. I love that one so much. All the smells again, back to like Disney candles. Like they have ones like flying over orange groves. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. My number three is the Mexico Pavilion. When I asked myself, if I were to go into Epcot and only be able to do like one country, mm-hmm. what would I pick? And it, I think generally would be mexico yeah because going into that land you are really you feel like you're a million miles away because the way they've created the lighting and all that stuff is so perfect absolutely perfect and Mm -hmm. then you've got the ride in there there's the restaurant there's the um margarita uh place la capa del tequila like i don't know the name (laughs) and then uh the gift shops and then there's the kid cot and then the area in the front with all there's so much in there and it is the only one that is like this where it's all internal Nothing outside. That's yeah. not true. I guess they do have the restaurant across. And, right. But you right. know what I mean. Like, generally, it's all in, enclosed. Mm-hmm. And I just, I love it. I love the smell in there. I love that you can kind of hear the ride in the background. Like, And again, that's kind of one of the ones that we would go in first. So I feel like when you're very excited, we just got off the plane and mm-hmm. we're here. And that's like the first one we went to all the time. It was very exciting to be there. Yeah. I yeah. just love it. The, uh, Can't you there, just smell it right now? Yeah. There are specific ones that are so immersive and like that, that kind of stuff. Like I almost put the Morocco Pavilion on mine because you feel like you're a million miles away. Mm-hmm. It's so like once you walk back in there, but then there's other ones like the Germany and stuff like that that are cool. But I mean, it's just a little courtyard and then you kind of walk back out. But yeah. like there's some like those that you just feel so immersive and they're mm-hmm. so good. Yeah. Ugh, we might need to start planning our next Disney trip. 
<laughs> well, now that we're doing this podcast, I was telling, telling her, I was like, we got to go back because I got to get B-roll of every ride. the video Every version, inch of yeah. this park, you know, or uh, this. You have a lot of B-roll from a lot of years, but, but some but, of the old, yeah. It's amazing. Just, I mean, from what seems like not that long ago, some of this footage is so grainy. I'm like, oh, I've got B-roll of that, so I don't need to get it. But now I'm like, oh my gosh. And it was only from a few years ago. Cameras have improved so much just yeah. in the last few years, like uh, phone cameras specifically, but wow. Mm-hmm. Number two. All right. So this is definitely cheating. <laughs> okay. Walking around World Showcase. <laughs> You're going to laugh when you see my number one. Okay. <laughs> But I couldn't decide because I was going through all the pavilions and I'm like, oh, maybe Morocco, maybe Mexico, maybe whatever. And I'm like, forget it. It's my podcast. It's my rules. I say (laughs) walking around world showcase. (laughs) Hey, the title is top 10 things to do. That is a thing to do. That's true. And again, it's not even one specific gift shop. It's not one specific ride. It's not one specific anything. It's just walking around world showcase and it could be with a nice coffee it could be with a beer it could be with something it could be but just take your poison with yeah. a snack from the norway bakery Kringla <laughs> Og Cafe. you love that bakery i haven't been to it in years i need you to take me i always yes, go ma'am. no we don't need anything i need you to say let's get in go line get and get it. you some mm-hmm. okay i can do i want a troll horn <laughs> when i said troll it's like with the yeah. ch troll <laughs> you're always like they're so good and i'm like i don't think i've had one it. in years i don't even remember <laughs> Get some coffee with a troll horn. You just and you get you used to get them from Meyer all the time too. No, those are cream horns. They're different. Actually, a little bit better than the really? troll horns. As a connoisseur, I will accept you. I am a connoisseur on that. of cream-filled, horn-shaped items yeah. made of flaky <laughs> pastry. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. You're number two. Guardians of the Galaxy, baby. Whoop whoop. Oh, man. Um, That was one that, again, I thought I'd be motion sick on. Absolutely was not. That is one of the most thrilling, if not the most thrilling ride I've ever been on. Like, we don't live far from Cedar Point. We've ridden all those kinds of roller coasters. If if you don't live in the Midwest, Cedar Point is like roller coaster capital of at least America. And those are, like, terrifying. But this one is so thrilling because there's the music aspect. You get Mm -hmm. a different song each time. Um, it's just it's, so well done and so unbelievably fun and thrilling. And again, that was one that like Ellen's energy adventure yeah. would have been top tier on my 100%. list. 100%. I love that. You know what that. we need to do? Future, future episodes. Like top five extinct. Th- oh, yes. man. Oh, oh, write it I'm down. Getting, I know. Write I'm getting down. real jazz. So. <laughs> Sorry. So. It, it, again, it was one of those, it needed to be replaced. Like you'd go in and watch that. And it was, there were two people in there with you, which was all the more fun, I think. <laughs> And it but, had a capacity for 300 people, if not maybe 500 people. And there'd be waste. you and one other couple would be like, how's it going up there? And it, <laughs> you would be so far away from them. They'd be in the next room like 20 minutes before you, like we're just spinning around in their You're giant just slowly vehicles. Slowly and then moving forward slowly. <laughs> just waiting for the next giant vehicle to come up behind you. And then Ellen's like, hey, Bill, where are you? So I just feel like even though I loved the Ellen's, energy adventure i was sad when it closed but this was again yet a, yet another worthwhile swap yeah good move good move gosh so you're number one is that what we're on oh my gosh i know time just flies when you're having fun <laughs> this podcast is easily two hours <laughs> <laughs> that's all right it's a podcast i think the podcast is supposed to be long yeah all right my number one mm-hmm guardians of the galaxy oh i figured because <laughs> as i said it i was like you haven't said it yet there's no way it's not your number one it's so good it's so smooth i mean you feel like you are flying when you're riding that ride like i i i went in expecting to like it but i just was blown away by how good that ride was it's my favorite <sighs> ride in right Walt disney now. world right now because i mean you just feel like you're actually floating through space i don't know how they did it but you i wanted to be twice as long oh, it's I just know. it's so good it is so so good it's like what Space Mountain wanted to be, but they didn't have the technology. Now they have the technology and they are using it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, like Every time I think about that ride, I picture myself backwards and turning, but like comfortably backwards and, like, and uh, turning. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it doesn't ever feel like scary like that. It's just fun. It is so fun. They've somehow done it. <laughs> um, it's the closest thing I think we can get to flying. <laughs> I think so. At least right now in 2023. Unless you're a hang glider, I guess. Or in a skydiver. In which case you go ride Soren and then... <laughs> or Superman. I guess there's maybe other people who can fly. <laughs> My number one is walking around the world <laughs> showcase. I knew But it. I was a little more specific. Okay. At night. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the lights. Every pavilion is so well lit. You, one of your first blog posts you ever I was ever just going to say, yeah. Wrote, and I mean, it was like eight years ago. Yeah. Was, I think it was the first one you ever wrote, mm-hmm. was about Epcot at night. Yep. And all the different pavilions and the way they do the lighting and how beautiful it is. And, and yep. it is. Yeah. And there's just something about like nighttime and no one's as sweaty as they were. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they still smell, but it's right. not, oh, yeah. you know, it's just yeah. dried, dried smell. <laughs> And I, I'm going to try to work in sweat into every single every episode. episode. Well, it's a Disney podcast. It's so. a part of Disney World, you know? It's part of the experience. It's what you're paying for. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's just something about it. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's just like a, it's electric. And it's funny too, because, well, we'll get into it. So those are our lists. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get into the listener submissions on our Instagram <sighs> at Disneyville Podcast. Well, the, uh, that blog post I wrote, by the way, I wrote it for Resort Loop. And Resort Loop is our favorite Disney podcast. Yeah. That actually, that's, I mean, when we first started dating, we were listening to them all the time. And I haven't I, listened to them in a minute. But the, oh, I loved that podcast so much. And that was a part, big part of the inspiration for us starting one. Absolutely. So, so thank you, Resort thank Loop. Thank you, Resort Loop. And they're still around. Go, go check them out. Tam. I was like, I, it's just Tim now. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like we've gone through a phase where we haven't listened to podcasts in years. We've really gone to like audiobooks when we're driving. Yeah. So, like, we need to pick back up. Oh, my gosh. I love Tim We got to size up our competition. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing our own thing. <laughs> All right. So, I took a bunch of screenshots. I wanted to start with this one. So, Jay, I don't, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name. We'll put it on the screen. Uh, mentioned their favorite is the Behind the Seeds tour. I really, really want to do that. One of my agents just did it. And it was, pre- it's so inexpensive for, as far as tours go Compared in, to, yeah. uh, in, in Walt Disney World. And I've heard it's really good. We need to do it. I think our next non-kid trip where it's just yeah. us, we do the behind the seeds tour, Keys to the Kingdom. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Because those are, we could do with kids, but not really. It's and I don't want to pay for them because they're not going to get, I don't even think you can. Maybe there's an age limit. Uh, anyway. I don't know, actually. Um, but yeah, we. I can't believe you've never done it. That's one of those things people are like, oh, well, surely you've done that. I'm like, I actually haven't. And they have some cool ones at Animal Kingdom too. Like I, I really want to do the the tours like maybe we do like yeah. as a, a trip to the tours um a tour trip but yeah the, the behind the seats tour as a gardener i can't believe we've never done and living with the land is my favorite ride in epcot so <laughs> you combine the two. Oh, so good uh jamie joe said i love to watch the traditional drum performance at the japan pavilion with a good snack oh yeah what are those Ty- are taiko drums is that what they're yeah. called yeah yeah um they're so that, good it's so anytime i hear them I'm like yes and we yeah. always stop and listen because it's just so cool and it's of course right outside of one of my honorable mentions which is mitsukoshi walking oh, yes. around the japanese department store and i think it's so cool i didn't know until like a few years ago that it's like an actual department store and yeah. there's like a history behind it they have it on the walls when you first come mm-hmm. in um pictures and some of the history of the department store they're doing the uh the oyster thing again like the, for the first time in four years they're bringing oh. it back so i just saw that the other day that's exciting that's pretty cool Okay, Emily Hudson said, favorite thing to do in Epcot is visit the seas and see the manatees. I love those manatees. They're so cute. And they're always eating lettuce and just floating around they're being like, manatees. Hey, look how healthy I am. <laughs> oh, that is good. That's, yeah. That's another one that I feel like we we used to just walk right by. We'd get off the seas with Nemo and friends mm-hmm. and then we would leave. But now with with the girls, we go and they love we looking around. And there's so much cool stuff in there. They usually have divers in there and... Like that whole pavilion, I, I'm really glad we're spending more time in there nowadays. I feel like it's a little underrated. That was also, I, like I said, I had 15 honorable mention. I had like Let's three or four. Go through every that square was, inch of the park and talk about it. Right? But I had the Seas Pavilion, exactly that. There's like a little scavenger hunt book you can get right when you get off the Nemo ride. Yeah. It's, I think it's kind of underrated and there's a lot in there and you could actually spend a decent amount of time. I think that Disney should add in a little quick service spot in there. And then people would stay even longer, baby. I am surprised they haven't or updated that. Or even like that. a little stall with like <laughs> coffee. <laughs> you know what though? If you do want your 80s nostalgia, that's a good place to get it. Because mm-hmm. you walk in there and it feels like it's exactly what it looks like in the, the VHS videos from mm-hmm. <laughs> 1994. It looks exactly the same. I love that. Oh my gosh. Okay. KMRXX4 said Club Cool. It didn't even cross my mind, Club Cool. Of course, well, and there's cool. like the newish version of it, which I don't. We've have not we, been I was in like, yet. We peeked in, but it's always been such a long line. We're like, yeah, we'll we'll catch it. On we'll the get next our time. Beverly another time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, a lot of people actually said <laughs> mentioned oh, the Beverly. Um, yeah, that's one that has always been a favorite of ours. Yeah. Now the old one's now the Starbucks, right? Yes. Again, and, but it's like right next to it. it's like this. It's right next to it. It's like the same thing. 
Well, no, Club no, Cool's no, no. now Cl- over by the um, other side. No, 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 no. Connections is the Starbucks. And it's across the hall. So there, it's not in the old Starbucks. It's, it's, that was I'm on thinking the of the old side. Starbucks by Poop Wall. Yes, by Poop Wall. That's on the other side. This is on. This is right next to the Starbucks. Across it's from. the fact that you just said yes by poop wall. Just by so poop wall. <laughs> some of you guys, if you know, you know. Um. Ooh, Sydney said, "Get a pastry from Leal." Oh, that is a really good quick service. You everything in there is really good. Everything the we've quiche. ever had. <sighs> yep. Yep. And also, again, the France Pavilion. It's so good. That Leal is just amazing. There's so many options. It's it's truly daunting. Yeah. <laughs> and then the ice cream shop kind yes. of around the oh bend there gosh, yeah. is also so good. Yeah. There's some flavor from there that someone was mentioning is just the best and I've never tried it. I need to figure out what it was. And next time we go, try it. Yeah. I think it had to do with caramel something. And I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh baby. Yeah, I feel like we don't get ice cream there very often. I don't, I, I don't know why. I don't have a good reason for that. We just don't. I'm having you read this one because I don't know how to pronounce that. And I don't know that you do either, which is <laughs> funny. Well, it's fun. is that right? Sitting sitting in Germany with a Schoffenhopper watching the world go by. Is that how is that I don't know. I know what's how to say Hefeweizen. That, what's is that the one that's got the orange in it? That's like an orange. I don't know oh, that was people the Hefeweizen. are screaming at us. They're probably so mad right now. I know, like, no, you say it wrong. Um Whatever that is, yeah. That that German beer that I always get when we're there mm-hmm. that's really good. That's got like an orange orange mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. That's so good. I feel like it's I want to get a pretzel from Germany. I haven't done that in a long time. Oh, yeah. That sounds good. Oh, I love this. Allie KB said, I love sitting by the fountain under Spaceship Earth at night, watching the lights and listening to the music. We need to do that more often. Yeah. I feel like we don't often people watch towards the front there. And yeah. that would be lovely. And just being by the ball. I mean, it's just so pretty. And the new lights they've got on it. 10 out of 10. Yeah. I love any anywhere in World Showcase where they have like the standing tables, especially during the festivals. I love sitting there and just like watching people go by as you're enjoying your little... Mm-hmm. your little snack your expensive little snack <laughs> and it's so little it's, it's so, so little but it's so so tasty mm-hmm. um but yeah there there is some good people watching in epcot for sure uh jordan said play she loves to play if i lived in epcot i would live in dot 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 and pick the cottage in canada or a french apartment so uh, that's a fun I, I yeah. never we've never done that yeah that's fun if i lived in epcot where would you live what Ooh, a fun idea i like that we should do that in a vlog sometime soon yeah that's fun that is fun um Mick Plans said, I love the scavenger hunt in World Showcase. Just a little extra fun while wandering. Did, uh, are, they're changing it out to something new, aren't they? Like a new, uh, a new character. Cause it was, uh, Phineas and Ferb for a long time. And then it's, uh, it was like Kim Possible before Kim that. Kim Possible before that. But they're doing something new now. And I don't remember. What, it's like DuckTales or something. Well, that would be amazing. I don't think it's, I'll have to look it up what it is. But I don't, uh, yeah, that's, uh, they're changing out the, the whole scavenger hunt. Let me see if I can find it really fast. It is DuckTales. Oh, Genevieve is going to lose it. So She's she, been watching the old DuckTales. Yeah, the original DuckTales. Yeah, I don't I don't even know what, why it got brought up, but I started singing the theme song. And, it's uh, so good. It, uh, that theme song is so good. And then, like, Brendan Yuri sings it, too, and I was showing her that, and then we were watching it, and she's like, and I was like, this is like a show. And she's like, oh, my gosh. And so we've been watching the original DuckTales. It's she's awesome. very confused by the fact that the bad guys in it are beagles. I mean, they don't look, oh, we have a beagle named Pinocchio. <laughs> and uh, just to confuse you even more. Uh, and so I was joking with her. I'm like, those are beagles and they steal just like Pinocchio steals food. <laughs> but I think she's really grappling with that. Like, so is Pinocchio a bad guy? I mean, yes, sometimes. Honey, he no, he's he does a good steal boy. Food. He's a good boy. All right. We did it. Epcot done. Two to go. Oh, we should do one on Disney Springs though, too. Oh my gosh. We really, uh, yeah. There's no end to one. Oh, we, you yeah. have no idea how high I can fly. <laughs> Um, so definitely we didn't mention this earlier, but we also have welcome to Disneyville.com mm-hmm. and there you will see show notes from the show. So if you want to go back to a different show, I mean, I know we're still early on, um, and see what we talked about, or maybe you just want to reference it and you don't want to have to like scrub through and figure out. Mm-hmm. Um, but also on there, we will have linked our vlogs mm-hmm. from all of our years and years of trips to Disney world, including our most recent trip. I guess we've got some new ones coming up. Yep. Yep, there's From 140 January. on our Walt Disney World playlist, and there's some more coming. And then we have Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line. We've got a bunch of different ones up there. Oh, so. yeah. So definitely check it out, of course, on our YouTube, which is Disneyville Podcast. Mm-hmm. Catch us on social media. <laughs> I could say it all again. I think you guys get it. But yeah. um, that was fun. It was weirdly hard, like I said. Like, there were so many things that I wanted to put on there that I was like, mm-hmm. do I just go very, very specific and then cut a bunch out, or do I do more just broad? And I went broad because I'm like, 
It's just hard. It was, that was that was a toughie. You know what we need to do an episode on? Top we, 30 in Epcot. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that episode will literally be a day long. Um, one thing we do, and we're so weird, and this is why we needed to start this podcast, is because we would sit and play this game that wasn't really a game where we would go back and forth and just share like, okay, name a very specific spot in Disney mm-hmm. World, anywhere in the resort. And we'd be like, sitting at the Pinocchio Village House on the little balcony that overlooks the carousel. Like, Third that table was the in. game. <laughs> like yeah, the, like the it wasn't even... Specific we could get, like little deep corners of Disney. Yeah. yeah. Deep corners of Disney. That's a good... Yeah, so that's how weird we are. That's what you're dealing with. Uh, we could do a whole episode on that. Just like, can you think of... Hey, okay, you remember that? The deepest, darkest corner you can think of. <laughs> Dinosaur ride, that little trail that's sometimes part of the queue that's just off to the side. I want to do a top 10 bathrooms in Disney. Oh, you getting tired? <laughs> yeah, did you hear that <laughs> yawn? Walk right through that yawn. <laughs> anyway, all right, yeah, we got to we do bathrooms, water fountains. We'll, we'll hit all the... Oh, you guys are going to be bored to tears. All the need-to-know information. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching or listening. We love you guys. And we'll see you next time for Hollywood Studios. Bye. Bye. Bye.